Hi guys, what's up? It's me, Vivs here from SlideNerd. In this video, we will talk about how to handle item clicks within the Recycler view. In the previous video, I showed you something about how you can validate your design and I'm going to get rid of that layout for now and simply have the root layout. Now before we start anything, let me take you to a familiar place. It's in github.com forward slash SlideNerd, the place where all the code is being put up for this video, the previous videos and the upcoming videos out there. So you guys have any errors, any problems, any doubts, you're always welcome to go here, get the code and check your code against this over here. Now next, let's discuss about how we can handle item clicks. So you go to Google first and you type recycler view item click, you'll definitely notice a result from Stack Overflow. Just open that and you will see that there's a lot of people talking a lot of things here in terms of handling item clicks. You must read this post if you have time. If you don't, let me tell you what is exactly going on here. There are two ways to handle a recycler views item click. One is from within the activity or fragment where you're hosting the recycler view or drawer. The other is from within the adapter. The first approach which requires the activity or fragment to handle clicks is a complicated one because you need a guesser detector and on item touch listener to intercept touch events from your recycler view. Unfortunately for you guys, there is no on item selected method like the list view in the recycler view and hence you'll have to do a lot of work if you want to handle item clicks from outside the adapter. So inside my navigation drawer, I simply have four icons and four items, but I use a for loop of a size 100 to simply loop over the icons. In other words, I go 0, 1, 2, 3 and then 4%, 4 is 0 and hence I come back to 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. And I'm using the modulus operator here to access the right element and loop over the array any number of times I want. You go to adapter here, I have added two more statements. Inside the on create view holder, I have a log statement and inside the on bind view holder as well, I have a log statement along with the position for which this method is being called for. Now if you run this app in Lollipop, let's take a look at what the log hat has to talk about it. So go here to Lollipop preview, start the main activity and as you can see, as soon as you do that, even before you see the drawer or the list, there's on create view holder and the on bind view holder is being called for the positions 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If you open the list here, you will notice 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So these are the 5 visible items that the navigation drawer or the recycler view initially tries to build up and display. Now as you start scrolling down, you will notice that on create view holder and on bind view holder are getting called for some time, but then there's just the on bind view holder that gets called. Take a look at that. I scroll down all the way down to the hundredth item and then there's on bind view holder. Again, if I go back all the way up, it's only on bind view holder that gets called and that's because of the recycling which I discussed in my earlier recycler view videos where I told you that the view holder is created once but it's going to be reused again and again. Now if you click on one of the items, currently nothing happens. So how can we make something happen? Pretty simple. Go to your adapter inside the on bind view holder method. Let's say you want to show a toast when you click on the icon. Of course, in reality, you would like to open an activity or a fragment and I will get to that because we need to handle the whole item click in that case. So simply go here holder.icon.setOnClickListener. So have a simple anonymous inner class for handling the item click. I can simply make a toast here. If you open the drawer here, I have an on click that's going to be triggered only for the icon click over here. So if I click on this here, nothing happens. But if I click on one here, the toast gets displayed at position zero. I have also printed the position here as you guys notice. Go down, click anywhere on any icon and it's going to give me the exact position. So for individual items inside your recycler view, like an icon or a text view or an image view, you can handle clicks this way. Now of course, there's another way of writing this. You can do this on click thing in, inside your view holder as well. And let's talk about that. So let's remove this complete on click listener statement here also don't make it final anymore just remove that and all we got to do now is go to our view holder here you're going to implement the on click listener by simply saying on click listener over there and just press alt enter implement the methods on click and inside the constructor where you have said my view holder icon is find view by id right below that statement here add your on click listener by simply saying set on click listener this over here in other words, every time the icon is clicked, it's going to simply have the on click triggered for that icon. 
Now all you want to do is print the position currently as in. So at this point I have the toast message fully but there's a small problem and that is I need access to the position inside the on click method. Now one of the things as a beginner that you would be tempted to do is to go here at the top make a variable int position inside the on bind view holder the get a reference to that position store the latest variable value and then go here in the on click and use that value but no don't do that take a look at this statement here inside the developer.android.com's recycler views documentation it says it's inside the on bind view holder they say that recycler view will not call this method again if the position of the item changes in the data unless the item itself is invalidated or the new position cannot be determined in other words if you delete an item if you add some extra item nothing is going to happen for this reason you should use you should only use the position parameter while acquiring the related data inside the on bind view holder method and do not keep a copy of it if you need the position of an item later just use the get position method which will have the updated position in other words what they are trying to say is inside the on bind view holder use this variable position but outside it don't keep a reference to it because it may change if an item is added or deleted or something like that so inside your on click if you want access to the position simply use the get position method instead of doing it the other way now at this point let's try to run this and see how it happens so there you go you click the item you click anki over here nothing is going to happen but if you click two here there's item clicked at position number one and that will work for any position that you click inside your navigation drawer so that is pretty much the two different ways you can handle clicks inside your recycler views adapter well enough playing with silly toast messages how about we do something real like deleting an item from our recycler view for that we need to go to our adapter at the top and add a method called delete here this method will simply accept the position that you want to delete and will remove the item out there and the way you remove things is pretty simple just take your data structure which is an array list or list and simply call remove on it so simply say remove here and pass the position inside now if you remember if the earlier list view uh, stuff that we used to do out there we used to call notify data set changed however with the recycler view you don't do that anymore rather let's take a look at what android is trying to tell us in the notify data set changed method here it says notify any registered observers that the data set has changed and now they are saying that there are two types of data change events Either you add, remove, delete items, that is you make structural changes or you simply update an item at some existing position which is basically a data change or item change as they call it over here. They say item changes are when a single item has its data updated but no positional changes have occurred but structural changes are when items are inserted, removed and moved within the data set. Now here they say, they say that this event does not specify about the data that has changed forcing observers to assume that all the items and structure may no longer be valid. In other words layout managers will have a fully forced rebind and relay out all the visible views. As you can see from this statement you can make out that it's a very expensive operation if you call notify data set change. Rather they are saying that if you are writing an adapter it will be more efficient to use one of the most specific change events out there like notify data set change as a last resort now here, here they have clearly said that use it as a last resort now what method can we use alternatively there's a method here which says notify item removed and it takes an integer argument there's again one for inserted this one for change take a look at these methods there's a range inserted range removed range change as well for now since we are removing one item what we need is item removed here we simply go there now it says notify any observers that the item previously located at the position has been removed from the data set and now its position is old position minus one. Now this is a structural change event because the structure of the list view is going to change after you do this. So we can simply go to our code here and we can say notify item removed and we can pass the position over there. Call it here by saying delete here and get the position and now we should be good to go. So click on the icon, take a look at that. It's deleted. Click on 4, that's deleted. Click on 3, that's deleted and so on. However, if you go back and if you come back to the main activity, you open this, again, everything is going to remain intact because we have not saved our adapter or list view to actually contain those changes which you can do with the help of an SQLite database or shared preferences or whatever you prefer. So this is basically how delete works and of course you can customize this animation by having a slide out or slide in or pop out or whatever you want to do with the default item animator which is again something we'll talk about in the upcoming videos.
Now in the further videos, as we add data from the internet, as we use swipe to refresh layout, we'll talk about how to add and remove ranges of items out there. And adding an item, a single item for now is just the way you deleted one. So if you like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to Slide Nerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.